Hi everybody, this is Howard, the Teaser King, coming to you with week one of the NFL. Um, really just some comments I want to make about preseason and things like that. Um, first of all, I'm hearing a lot of, well, we don't want to play players in the preseason, they'll get hurt, it's meaningless, yada, yada, yada. And they can't be more wrong. First of all, it's, it's like anything, right? Uh, a million things will happen and then one bad thing and then they'll say oh look look what bad thing happened even though a million good things happened so they talk about an injury to Romo or you know but they don't talk about everybody else played Aaron Rodgers and Manning and all the other quarterbacks that played and they didn't get hurt and it's been normal throughout football in the preseason I mean, as far as it goes back, you play, you get your regulars up to speed. You got to get the timing down. Uh, all this nonsense about worrying about injury, I think it's a joke. Um, then maybe they shouldn't play at all because they might get injured. I mean, that's basically what you're saying, right? Why, why play college ball? You might get injured. Why play pro ball? You might get injured. I mean, it's just a bunch of whiners that have no idea, no concept. It's like trying to play golf without practicing. You can't do it. And that's what happens in football. It's such a passing league. It's so much timing. You got to get your rhythm down. You got to get hit. Just because you get hit doesn't mean you're going to get injured. It's just a fluke. It happens. You get injured. You get injured in the first quarter of the first game. What's the difference? So the way you attack this is you watch these teams that do not play. There are starters. Uh, I think Buffalo is doing this. And you'll watch these other teams. And basically... These are under teams. These teams will do terrible the first first game because nobody you can't just get in shape. You can't you can't run a marathon without practice. You can't swim without practice. You must practice. You must get your timing down, your routes down, your stamina down. These guys you you can run all you want, but then there's football shape and you can't just get into football shape without playing the game. They don't practice that hard. They're not getting hit that hard. That's why you, so many teams stink uh, this time. Uh, New England wins because Brady's so good, you know, that's the only difference. Uh, or Denver, well, Denver won with their defense, but um, if you need to get, if you're relying on a quarterback in a passing game and you don't play him in the preseason, you're not going to win probably the first two, three games because the timing's off. How many times have you heard me say, you know, Indianapolis with Manning was, you know, 13-0, and 0, and then they sit him down like a bunch of babies. Well, he might get hurt, so we let, let's let not play him. They don't go undefeated, and guess what? They don't play him in the last game, then there's the bye, and then they play, and they lost every time because his timing was off, and that's what happens. You can't just sit a guy down because you're afraid of an injury. That's football. I mean, he could get, he can get in a car accident. He could... You know, why don't you just keep him in bed in his house and lock him up and not let him out? I mean, you know, he could get a car accident. He could sprain his ankle coming out of bed. He could hurt himself walking on the sidewalk. I mean, these things are so ridiculous. And the preseason, if it's meaningless, they shouldn't have it. But it's good to get practicing against other teams. And it's good to get your timing down and get hit because you can't do it in practice. So... That's why you have them, and they're not bad. I don't understand the fourth game, all this, oh, we don't want to get anybody hurt, and then you see such terrible play the first two or three weeks because nobody has their timing down, and there's a lot more injuries because the guys basically aren't ready to get hit and are not ready to play four quarters, uh, and it's just poor play. So that first probably two weeks are a waste that they should be using in the preseason I mean, what's the difference if the guy gets hurt in the fourth preseason game or the first half of the first game because he's out of shape, because he's not in football shape? So I just totally disagree with all these crybabies saying they shouldn't play them. And what's the purpose of playing your third teamers in an exhibition game? I don't see it. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, then just call the game off. You know, have everybody pay the full amount and get there and just call the game off and say, you know what, we're not going to play. We don't want to get anybody injured. But we really don't need to practice because we're all so good. We're all in the playoffs, and so we don't need to practice. So week one, most of these games are going to be under.
because most of the quarterbacks are going to just be terrible because their timing is going to be off. They're not used to getting hit. They're not used to going three quarters or four quarters. And I think it's going to be pathetic the first week or two. And definitely look for overs unless the quarterback's been playing. And, you know, that keep an eye on who plays in this third game and the fourth game. Um, you know, I definitely like to see, uh, you know, this week and next week, Aaron Rodgers playing a half. Uh, you know, Drew Brees playing a half. Brady, I, you know, played one series, but he's Brady. But still, he'll be rusty after sitting out for four weeks. Uh, and I also am laughing at this Jimmy Granafilo. I mean, who the hell is he? I never heard of him before. Yeah, he's the, you know, the best thing since sliced bread. I mean, come on. They'll be, they'll, there's no way they'll beat Arizona with this Grandma Fila guy. Um, I'm going to bet heavy on Arizona there. But like I said, most of these games are going to be unders. Unless the smart coach who plays his starters at least the first quarter and first half of this week and next week. I mean, look at Cam Newton. He played three quarters yesterday. Didn't get hurt. How amazing. He didn't get hurt. But it'll be better for him in week one because he's you got to get your timing down with your receivers against other pros. You can't do it in in, uh, in practice. It doesn't work. You need to play uh, regular time, not just in practice. So anyway, that's T.J. King's words of advice. Um... I'll be doing a video once we get a little closer. I've already spotted three or four games that I really love. Just waiting that, you know, who gets injured or not. As far as Tony Romo's injury, um, they had uh, Kellen Moore was going to be, the, he would have been a, a, a starter and he would have been really good. Um, he threw for 400 yards the, the last game without Des Bryant. So he had Des Bryant imagine what he'd do. He was great in college, and when he left, Boise wasn't very good, were they? Mm, okay. And then they have uh, the kid from Mississippi State, Dak Prescott, probably much better than Romo. I mean, you know, Romo was okay. He was an average quarterback. He didn't get good till they had a balanced offense to Marco Murray. So, Teaser Kings, here's my keys to what I look for in a strong team that I want to bet on. First is the coach. I want a good coach. I want a Harbaugh. I want Urban Meyer, uh, you know, Saban. Um, you know, that's the first thing. And even in the pros, I mean, I, I want Ditka. I wanted Jimmy Johnson. I wanted um, Joe Gibbs, uh, Bill Walsh. I didn't want, today, these coaches are terrible. Second thing I want is a good quarterback on a balanced offense. Okay, Montana and Brady kind of had a little short passing as they're running or they could run but it's key you have a balanced offense this is why most teams lose they're one-dimensional they can only throw and I don't care who you have on offensive line it doesn't matter you're not gonna you know here's a perfect example Michigan State played Alabama last year Michigan State had two All-Americans and basically an All-American this year so basically had three All-Americans on their offensive line Connor Cook, a quarterback, but he was banged up. Good running, good passing, and they still couldn't move the ball. So everybody who cries about an offensive line is just full of it because a good defense, if you put pressure on them, if you have good defensive ends and you blitz, it doesn't matter who you have at offensive line, which is why I advocate never drafting an offensive lineman in the first round. Um, my point here is, you must have a balanced offense. If you have a balanced offense and the defense can't play you for pass, then you've got them because you can run, you can pass, the defense doesn't know what to do, they're on their heels, and you change it up. And that's very successful. And the third thing I look at is a strong defense. So like the Seattle Seahawks, got a great coach, got a great quarterback, and a balanced offense, and a great defense. That's why they win, that's why New England they used to have a great defense when they won their Super Bowls, and they kind of went flat. Then they, you know, brought in Revis Island. They had a great defense. They won again. Um, Brady is a good quarterback. I mean, he's a great quarterback. But I mean, so you've got <clears throat> Belichick, good coach. You had Brady, great quarterback, pretty balanced offense. They'd still run it pretty good. 
and then they had a great defense. So those are the keys. Um, you know, you, you've got to be balanced on offense. So everybody cries about an offensive line. It's got nothing to do with it. If you can run the ball, if you have a good running back, and you have good receivers, and the defense doesn't know what you're doing, you're going you're gonna to win most of your games just because they don't know what they're doing. So that's what I look for. So when you go down the rosters, half these teams don't have good quarterbacks because they don't know how to draft good quarterbacks. Uh, why isn't Bryce, Bryce Petty starting for the Jets? I mean, he's got to be better than whatever they have. And he will be, but they won't start Ryan Fitzpatrick for whatever reason. They'll start him over Petty. And then you go down to um, uh, Chase Daniel, I see, hopefully will start. I don't remember what team he's on off the top of my head, but I'm seeing him in there, and he, he absolutely should be starting. And Bryce Petty and Doherty from Miami, from Western Kentucky, should be starting. Paxton Lynch should be starting. Uh, again, Connor Cook, I would trade that guy because you have Derek Carr, who's an excellent quarterback. Connor Cook, teams like Houston and Jacksonville and uh, Miami. Well, I mean, Miami's got Doherty if they play him. Jacksonville's got Allen from Arkansas if they play him. He's the better quarterback. So you just go down the list. If you play the right quarterback, you've got to be able to run the ball. You've got to create balance offensively. So you've got to run. And that sets up the pass and confuses the defense. So you've got to have a strong defense and a good coach. And there's very few good coaches. There's better quarterbacks out there than you think, but they don't play them because the coach is an idiot because he doesn't understand talent. I mean, you know, the GMs certainly don't understand talent. And then you have teams with a good defense. So you just go down. Those are the criteria you look for. Once you find that, that's who you bet on. You can find it in college. I think Michigan's got that this year. Uh, Alabama's usually balanced, but their quarterback's okay. Uh, Baylor's very balanced, but they don't have the defense, but TCU does this year. Um, you know, and, and teams like that, UCLA has Rosen. Great coach, great quarterback, should be balanced, and they have a great defense. Watch UCLA. Um, you know, so teams like that, you watch the defense. LSU. They get a quarterback, and they can balance up their offense. They always have great receivers. They always have great running backs, but that's what holds them back is the quarterback because they have the defense. All right, I don't want to get too much into college because this is a pro video, but basically you got the idea. I'm just using examples. So watch the unders week one. Watch the quality of play will be terrible. They shouldn't be resting these players uh, as often as they do, being afraid of injury. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. It's pro football. They need the practice. It's like not practicing golf because you might get injured. And then you, you, you ever try to play without practicing golf? You, you, you're terrible. They need the timing on the receivers. They need to be hit. They need to get into football shape. And the more they rest these players, the, better, the worse they'll look on week one. All right, everybody. This is Teaser King. Uh, have a nice night. Um, and uh, have a nice Labor Day. And I'll post... Uh, some picks on uh, week one as we get into it. Uh, but we're still, I don't want to post yet in case some injuries happen this weekend or next weekend. So I'll probably post like Labor Day, I'll probably post uh, the pros. Anyway, good luck. I posted a couple college. Uh, please go to www.teaserking.com and we'll take a look at it. All right, everybody, have a great night.